This is uh, Math 141. And complex numbers have to do with, uh, well, actually, any number that you've dealt with so far is a complex number. But let's start with a simple idea like the square root of 25. So square root of 25, as you know, square root is asking what number times itself a positive value would give us would give us 25. And in this case, you know, it's 5 because because 5 squared is, is 25. Um, and how about things like square root of 1? Well, square root of 1 is, is 1 because 1 times 1 is, is 1. Uh, square root of 7. Now that one is one that we uh, won't necessarily just be able to, to see or know, um, but we could get an estimate for it. Let's see, I know that 2 squared is 4, and that's less than 7. 3 squared is 9, and that's more than 7. So it should be two point, about 2 point something. And if I wanted, I could use a calculator. So let's see, uh, square root of 7. So square root of 7. Yeah, 2 point, 2 point something, 2.645. And as you know, this is an irrational number. Like this decimal is an approximation. I can't write this as a fraction. This decimal expansion goes on and on forever uh, without, without terminating. So I'll say it's about 2.65. I would round it up. So about 2.65. Uh, square root of zero, well it's zero, because zero times zero is zero. So now let's get into something like the square root of negative one. And you might already know this, uh, but the square root of negative one is asking what times itself would give us the value negative one. Well it's not one, because one times one is one. It's not negative one, because negative one times negative one is also positive one. So this is where uh, we basically talk about a new type of number or a, a different type of number, which would be an imaginary number. So the square root of negative one is a number, it is a value, and we call it i. So i is, uh, it, it's, a, it's a number, just like we say pi is a number. We use the symbol pi for that 3.14159, that ratio of a diameter of a circle, a circumference of a circle divided by the diameter is pi. So similarly, just like we use that pi symbol, we use the i symbol to mean the square root of negative 1. So with that in mind, if I had something like the square root of negative 4, and I wanted to uh, to know what it is, well, I'm going to think about the square root of negative 4 as the square root of 4 times negative 1. I can break it out like that. So I have the uh, square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. I know the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of negative 1 is i. It's it's two i. Yeah. So uh, square root a negative twenty five. Same sort of idea. I could think of it as the square root of twenty five times the square root of negative one, which would be five, and the square root of negative one is i. So it's five i. So now I have these imaginary numbers. Now I can deal with this square root of negative one because I know that it's i. i is the square root of negative 1. So what would i squared be? And think about it for a second, what it might be. So if I square something, it's times itself. So that would be square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. Well, it's negative 1 because it's uh, the square root of negative 1 squared. The square rooting and the squaring, the square rooting and the squaring undo each other. That's that's what they do, so it's negative one. So i squared is negative one. That's very important to keep in mind. If you, if you don't comfortable with that already, definitely uh, definitely keep track of that. And this is this is just a little recreation thing. I cubed. So i cubed would be uh, i squared times i. So negative one times i would be negative i. And how about i to the fourth power? Well, it would be times i again. So it would be negative i squared. Right? Negative i times i. Negative i squared. i squared is negative 1, so it would be negative negative 1, which is positive 1. Uh, okay. i to the fifth power 
times i again. 1 times i is just i. And notice we start to start over. So um, this i to the first is just i. i to the fifth is i as well. So i to the fourth is 1. i cubed is negative i, so on i squared is negative 1. So now this just cycles. This just cycles through. So if this is the same as i to the fifth, i to the sixth must be negative 1. i to the seventh must be negative i, and so on. So you can see how this causes a little cyclic relationship. That'll serve you well when you start uh, doing computation with, with, uh, with these. But really, this part right here, this i squared equals negative 1, this is a, this is a huge thing to keep in mind. So uh, with that in mind, let's say that I had something like a square root of negative 4 times a square root of negative 9. Now, when you're dealing with this sort of situation, you want to um, get it in terms of i first because um, that's the way things are going to work out. Uh, square root of negative 4, that is, uh, well, let's see, the square root of 4 is 2. Square root of negative 1 is i, is 2i. Square root of negative 9, square root of 9 is 3. Square root of negative 1 is i. So this, these two things multiplied together are the, are the same as this. So let's do this. Uh, these are all multiplied together. 2 times i times 3 times i. So 2 times 3 is 6. i times i is i squared. All right. So what's i squared? Negative 1. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. So this is, this is interesting to me. And it's a little counterintuitive, I think. If you multiply... Uh, two imaginary numbers together, you get a real number back. So actually, these seemingly have to do, you know, like not as much to do with each other as you would think, but it's interesting. You can multiply these numbers and get a real value back. Let's do another one. Square root of negative 2 times square root of negative 3. So square root of 2 is just square root of 2, so I'm just going to leave that as that. Square root of negative 1 is i times a uh, square root of 3 is square root of 3. I'm just going to leave it as that. Square root of negative 1 is i. So uh, square root of 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6. i times i is i squared. What's i squared? Negative 1. So root 6 times negative 1 is negative root 6. All right, so we can multiply these things together. So now we have a little bit of arithmetic just off the bat. We, we introduce this new type of number. And then now we have um, an arithmetic for it, at least a multiplication for it. So let's, uh, let's talk about addition and subtraction. We're really just talking about imaginary numbers with the i. So if it has an i and it has a square root of negative 1, it's imaginary. And if it doesn't, it's real. So for example, the number 5 or, or 17, these are, these are real. Or, or 2.8 or 3 fifths. And then the imaginary is just these with an i with them, like 5i, 17i, etc. Complex numbers um, is the marriage of both real and imaginary. Every real number is a complex number. Every imaginary is a complex number. But if I have something like 3 plus 2i, notice it has a real part, the 3, and an imaginary part, the 2i. Um, these are... These are, this number itself is neither all real nor all imaginary. It has real pieces to it, three real pieces, and two imaginary pieces. Um, together, uh, we'll just call it a complex number. And complex numbers in, in these, they, it could be zero. Like 5i, even though it, it doesn't have, it has zero um, real parts and five imaginary parts, it's still a complex number. So the complex numbers is marrying up the reals with the imaginaries, throwing them together. We write complex numbers in the form a plus bi, where a is the imaginary part. In this case, um, a would be 3, and b is the complex part in this part. In this uh, piece, b would be 2. And again, a and b can be 0, and it could still be complex. So let's take a couple of uh, complex numbers. 7 plus 2i, and let's add it to 8 plus 4i. Now, everything you know about variable is the same with complex numbers. This idea that you uh, you add like terms. It's probably something that you 
that you heard in the algebra class before. And I'm going to try and copy that correctly. So I have 7 plus 2i plus 8 plus 4i. All I'm doing is I'm, I'm counting. I'm going to throw the real pieces together, the real parts. So I have 7 and then 8 more. So what's that? 15. And then with the complex parts, I have, I have a 2i. And I'm going to add 4 more i's to them. So 2 of them plus 4 of them is 6 of them. Notice if instead of an i, that was, a, that was an x like 7 plus 2x plus 8 plus 4x, you, you combine them in a similar way. So you're just basically counting things. So adding complex numbers is pretty straightforward. You, uh, you add the real parts together, you add the complex parts together. Uh, subtracting is, is similar, like if I had 6 minus 3i, and I'm going to subtract uh, 5 minus 7i, something like that. You do have to be a little careful because, and just like subtraction is always tricky, you're subtracting the whole thing. So do think about distributing that subtraction into there. So I have a 6 minus 5, and then I have negative 3i minus a negative would be adding plus 7i, and then throw them together. So 6 minus 5 is 1, negative 3i plus 7i, negative 3 of them plus 7 of them is positive 4 of them. So you can, uh, you can add and subtract these things. So we have addition and subtraction. We have a little bit of multiplication. Let's do a little bit more multiplication with these. So if, if I had something like uh, 5i times i, um, and it doesn't ha hurt to uh, remind yourself again, remember i is the square root of negative 1. You know, keeping that in mind uh, I think is a good thing. So 5i times i, well, it's 5 times i times i is i squared. And again, that question, you're going to ask yourself over and over again, what's i squared? It's negative 1. So this is 5 times negative 1, which is negative 5. Uh, how about if I had 8i times 6i? Now notice with this, everything here is multiplied together. Like there's no distributing here. This is 8 times i times 6 times i. I don't have to go 8 times i, 8 times 6, 8 times i. They're all multiplied together. So I can just group them. 8 times 6, uh, that's that's probably something I should know. <laughs> 48. <laughs> i times i is i squared. Um, i squared is negative 1. So it should be negative 48. So... How about something like this? So this problem is different than these problems. In this one, it's 5 times 2 plus 7i. Notice these were all multiplied together, so I could just group them however I wanted. But in this case, the 5i is getting multiplied by the 2, and it's also getting multiplied by the 7i. So I have to do these separate. Now you don't have to write it all out like I'm doing. I'm just doing it this way to show every step. It's like this. So 2 times 5i, that's 10i. And then over here, uh, 5 times 7 is 35. i times i, i times i is i squared. And I know that i squared is negative 1, so this is negative 35. And then a 10i minus 35. And technically, I should write it in the a plus bi form, so that the real part should be first. So a negative 35 plus 10i. There it is. All right, how about 2 plus 3i times 7 minus 3i? So you've done problems like this a lot before. You know, earlier, remember, I said you can just think of i kind of as an x. It's not. But if you had to multiply these polynomials together, you know what to do. You distribute and you go. It's the, it's the same idea. So let's go ahead and do it. Uh, 2 times 7 is, is 14. 2 times negative 3i. Uh, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. So negative 6i. So notice I'm taking each term, distributing it to every other term in the other one. Uh, 3i times 7 it's positive 21i. And then, now it's going to get tricky, 3i times negative 3i. Let's see, 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. i times i 
is I squared. But what's I squared? Negative one. So this is this is negative nine times negative one, so it's a positive nine. So I have 14, I have a plus nine, and then I have this. And so now I can do some gathering up some like terms, add things together. 14 plus nine is 23. Uh, negative 6 plus 21 is positive 15. And there it is right there. Yeah, so I can just uh, distribute everything to everything else, clean up the I squared, and I'm good to go. So let's do another one that's similar to that one. Let's say I had uh, 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i. Looks like a difference of squares type situation. And let's see what happens. This is great. Uh, I, I just like doing this. This is so fun. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. Distribute that 3 into there. Negative 6i. 2i times 3i, that's going to be a positive 6i. And then, again, a little tricky part. 2i times negative 2i. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. i times i is i squared. But we know that i squared is negative 1. So negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4. And then notice what happens in this middle. Negative 6i plus 6i, that's 0. Those cancel each other out. So what I really end up with is just um, 9 plus 4, which is 13. And so I said that this was like a, it looked like a difference of squares type relationship. And it, it is. And these uh, complex numbers, when they're in this form, um, a plus bi and a minus bi, they're called conjugates. And what's what's great about them is if you multiply conjugates together, you get only a real part. The middle part drops out. The middle term drops out. So complex conjugates. So a plus bi and a minus bi are conjugates. And uh, what I'm noticing is if I if I multiply them out, the, the middle part, the i part, drops out. So I had this a plus bi, a minus bi. Now you can always just multiply it out. That's absolutely fine. But it's kind of nice to have this shortcut. There's an a squared. bi times negative bi. That's negative bi squared. i squared is negative 1. So that's a positive b. a squared plus b squared. Oop. And uh, notice that that middle term drops out, a minus bi, a plus bi. So if I multiply conjugate complex conjugates together, I get that uh, a squared plus b squared, which is exactly what happened here. 3 squared plus 2 squared is 13. Again, if you just want to multiply it out each time, definitely do it that way. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, here's another example. Uh, four, let's say 4 minus 7i. And I'm going to multiply it by its conjugate, 4 plus 7i. So two ways to think about this. I know that, uh, well, I'll do the, the brute force way if we just multiply it out. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times, why would I multiply by 4 again? 4 times 7 is 14, 28i. Negative 7i times 4 is negative 28i. Notice those middle terms drop out. Negative 7i times 7i negative 7 times 7, negative 49, i times i, i squared. I know i squared is negative 1, so negative 49 times negative 1 is positive 49. I end up with 16 plus 49, and I know that uh, that's just some arithmetic I can do, 65. And if I remembered this complex conjugate rule, I could have gotten straight to here from here. Difference of squares, I know the middle is going to drop out. 4 squared plus 7 squared. So we are dealing with complex numbers. We have learned how to add, subtract, and multiply them. Let's do division. And so division, so for example, if I think about 7 divided by i, that's weird. That's tough to visualize. Um, I'm going to think of this as a fraction, so 7 divided by i, like that. 
And so then um, what I can do is I can take advantage of that it's a fraction. And I'm just going to rewrite it so there's no i in the denominator. I just don't want any i down here. And whatever happens then, that can be my answer. And what I'll do is I'll... I know that i squared is negative 1. So if I could multiply this by some version of 1, right? If I multiply by 1, it's the same value. So I'm going to multiply by a version of 1 that gets i out of the denominator. So if I multiply by i over i, notice that's just 1. Anything times 1 is itself. Um, I'm going to get an answer. 7 times i, 7i. i times i is i squared. Well, I know i squared is negative 1. And anything divided by negative 1 is negative. So it is negative 7i. So 7 divided by i, 7 divided by i, you should recognize that these are the same thing, is just negative 7i. So dividing by a uh, imaginary number, my technique is to get the imaginary part out of the denominator. So here's another example. If I had uh, 5 divided by 2i, so um, I don't want the i down there. So what I could do, um, I, I think that when people first see this, they're like, oh, I know what to do. I'll multiply by 2i over 2i. But you actually don't need to multiply by the 2 part because notice 2 divided by 2 is just 1. You're just, you'd just be causing some um, other canceling later on for yourself. You can just multiply by the i because the i is the only part that's giving you trouble here. And so let's do that. 5 times i is, is 5i. 2i times i is 2i squared. All right, I know what i squared is, negative 1. So 5i over 2 times negative 1. I'm writing out all the steps just so you can see them which is 5i divided by negative 2. You could leave it like that. Uh, you could also write it as uh, 5i over 2. You could also write it as negative 5 halves i. Those are all the same. Oh, those are all equivalent to each other. And I'm not going to have a preference over, uh, over these three answers. I'll take all three of them. Um, probably these bottom two are a little better than that one. All right, so that seems super straightforward. So there's still an i down there in the denominator, and I want to get it out of here. Now, it feels like if you just use the same strategy we were using before, if you just multiply by i over i, it um, feels like it, it might feel like it works. It doesn't. And the reason because I get a 3i up here, but I have to distribute that to there. And that does give me a negative i squared, so that would get rid of the i there. But it actually causes me a little trouble uh, here. Because then I have, I just made an i there by multiplying that by it. So that's not going to work in this case. That only worked when I had just, just the imaginary part in the denominator. So what I need to do is I need to figure out something that I can multiply this 4 minus i part that would cancel out the i, that would cancel out the imaginary piece. And I see it in my complex conjugates. In other words, if I have a 4 minus i, I can use 4 plus i. And again, I'm just multiplying by 1 here to get it out of the denominator. So now if I do that here, in the numerator, I have 3 times 4 plus i, which just distribute that, 12 plus 3i, over 4 minus i times 4 plus i. Now you can multiply it out all the way if you want. I know the middle's going to drop out, negative 4i, positive 4i. So 4 times 4 is 16. Negative i times i is negative i squared, which is positive 1. So I have 16 plus 1 in the denominator. And there it is. You can leave your answer like that. Um, you might see in the back of your book the answer written this way. And notice all that they've done is they've gone 12 divided by 17, 3i divided by 17. And, and they're writing it in this a plus bi form. There's really not much computational advantage to doing it this way. Um, so I am perfectly fine if you leave it in. Let's go ahead and do one more like this. I have 3 plus 2i divided by 4 minus 3i. And I need to get, uh, manipulate this so I don't have an imaginary component in the denominator. So I have 4 minus 3i. I'm going to use its um, conjugate 4 plus 3i. 
and I'm going to use it in a version of 1. So I'm going this number right here times 1. And I know the denominator, uh, 4 times 4 is 16. Negative 3i times 3i is negative 9i squared. i squared is 1, so this is a positive 9. And then let's go ahead and do this numerator. This numerator is going to take a little more work. Uh, 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times 3i is 9i. And let's distribute the 2i then. 2i times 4 is 8i. 2i times 3i. Add a little trick right there. Uh, 2i times 3i. 2 times 3 is 6. i times i is i squared. I know i squared is negative 1, so this is actually a, uh, a negative 6. 6 times negative 1, so 12 plus 9i plus 8i minus 6. 12 minus 6 is 6. Uh, 9i plus 18i is 17i. And then this denominator, 16 plus 9 is 25. So 6 plus 17i over 25. And again, just like this one over here on the on the left, uh, you can you can leave your answer like this. I think you should. I think it's this is a better form. But if you want to write it as 6 over 25 plus 17 over 25i, uh, that's fine. You, your answer may look like that in the textbook, like I said. Uh, one thing I want to add to these types of problems, sometimes you'll do all this work and you'll get down to something like, uh, 15 plus, let's say, 6i over 3. And you're feeling good, and there's your answer. Um, one thing I want you to notice is if these are both, both the real and the imaginary part, if they're both divisible by that denominator, or they both share a factor, you can actually reduce it, right? Because these are both the, divided by that 3, both the 15 and the 6i. So 15 divided by 3 is 5. 6i divided by 3 is, is 2i. So this would reduce to this. Uh, similarly, if you had something like uh, 25 plus 15i, and let's say that's over 10. Um, these are Everything here is divided by 5. So you could divide a 5 out of it. So like 25 divided by 10, that's the same as 5 over 2. 15 divided by 10. See, I took the 5 out of both of these. Think of the, the 10 as 5 times 2. And the 5 is going into both of those. The 2 is going to stay. 15 divided by 5 is 3i. So you can reduce these as well. All right. So there is your complex numbers uh, review or quick intro. Give a try. Take a look at the problems out of the book, the, uh, the assignment. Give them a try. Send me questions that you have. And good luck with it.